when you buy disc brakes, they come with very long hoses, so they fit all different sizes of bikes. But it's always a good idea to trim those hoses to make your bike look nice and neat. So here's how to do it. We're going to do this with a set of Shimano XT brakes, but actually the theory is the same across all brands. Step one is just to slide off that plastic cover on the lever, and under there you'll see an 8mm nut. So first step is just to undo that. You might want to hold the lever to stop it from sliding around the bar, depending on how tight that is. Not too bad, so just wind it off. You might need to wobble the hose a little bit just to free it up. So now that eight millimeter nuts come off, there's nothing holding that hose into the brake lever, but you often find they are quite tight. So I'll take a little bit of play, just wobbling it around and out it comes. And there you can see the end of the hose has got an olive and a plunger in it. Notice how I've not undone the bleed screw on the lever just yet, because leaving that in will create a bit of a vacuum so that all this oil in the lever shouldn't drop out too badly. Your brakes should have come with some spares and a little packet, a spare olive and a plunger that we'll need to use when we cut the hose because these will be stuck on the old bit and they'll go in the bin. Now it's time to trim the hose to the correct length. I'm doing my rear brake today, so I'm going to look at the route in, get it in the spot I want to. Uh, I've got a full suspension bike, so I've got a bit of excess there to allow it to move when the rear suspension moves. And the same theory up on the bars. I don't want it too tight like that, because that's going to restrict the handlebars. So I'm going to take a little bit off, but I've still got a bit of hose there to let the bars turn. So. I'm determined, I want to take yeah, an inch and a half off there probably. You want a, a really good set of cutters for doing this. These are really good side cutters that will give me a nice clean cut on there. I've also got a piece of rag because when, once I cut off this bit of hose, any oil that's in there is going to drop out. So again, make sure you're not doing it above your front brake. You see as I've cut that hose, it squashed it a little bit. So I'm going to try and get it back as round as possible. Give it a bit of a squeeze with the pliers. And also, without pushing this in too far, so I don't push any oil out, just to make sure that's nice and round, so that my little metal insert will slide in there nice and easy. Now time to use these ingenious little yellow pieces of plastic that came in your disc brake packet. They sort of look like pencil sharpeners. What they do is they sit around the hose, and do it probably about an inch from the top, and use a set of mole grips. That's a nice safe way of clamping that hose without crushing it. The reason I've clamped the hose in there is because your little metal insert that goes in the end of the hose can be really tough to get in. So just push it in a little bit and then use any sort of tool just to tap it in nicely. So my cover and my nut are still slid down here and that's the order I want them on there. Now time to just slide your olive over the end of the hose and push that up into your lever. Basically you want the hose to bottom out into the lever, olive goes in and this nut now squashes that olive in there. So I'm just tightening that nut, I'm holding on to my brake lever again so that it doesn't slide around the handlebar and cause any damage and I can feel it starting to squash that brass olive and that's going to seal the system. So don't go crazy with that, but just get it nicely wound into the brake lever. And that's it sorted. I can now push my cover back on. And it's going to be time now to bleed any air out of that brake. Because I've done all the trimming and the work on this end of the system, it should just need a simple bleed from here on up, I shouldn't need to use a syringe, just using one of these very clever Shimano little funnels, I'll get any air that's out of this hose and in the lever. First thing I'm gonna do is undo the lever and just slide it around the bar so it's not such a steep angle. Undo my two and a half mil bleed screw on the top of the lever. Being careful with the little O-ring, I just wanna take that with that screw for now. Screw on my funnel, make sure it's got the O-ring on the bottom of it. Now it's time to just drop some mineral fluid into this funnel. So you don't need to go mad with this, just put enough in 
It's covering the brake bleed hole with you know, maybe a centimetre of fluid. So I'm just going to flick the lever. There you go. There's a couple of big bubbles coming out. Air's coming out of the system and oil is dropping in. Now you can use this little plunger just to plug up the bottom of the funnel so that when you unscrew it, the oil doesn't drop out everywhere. And that's still fresh oil there, so you can just put that back into your bottle and use that another time. Now it's time to reinsert your screw with the O-ring. You might want a little piece of paper or a rag just to catch any little bit of overspill there might be. Now I'm just going to put my brake lever back to the same angle it was, compare it to my other one, tighten that up. Jobs are good in. Bike's looking loads neater with a shorter piece of hose there. And if you want to see more videos in our maintenance playlist, you can click up there for that, or you can click down there for how to stop your disc brakes from squealing. You can click on me and my amazingly working brake to subscribe to GMBN. Amazingly working is not a word, but it doesn't really matter.